All right. Well, thanks for having me here, everybody. Uh, my name is Zach Rozier. Um, I'm Faith and Benjamin and Isabella's dad, so you guys know them. I'm also, uh, you know, just a- Pastor AJ is such a dear friend of mine. Now, how many of you love Pastor AJ? Isn't he great? Is he? I mean, he loves Jesus. He loves you guys. And I was so honored whenever he asked me to come and teach you the Word of God. I I love the Word. I teach a Bible study here at Brave. I absolutely love the word it was it is life and i want to impart to you some things that i've learned in the word of god and so before we learn about that let's go before the lord in prayer so if you bow your heads with me let's go ahead and humble ourselves before him father we humbly come before you we humble our hearts to this word Father, we thank you for sending your son who is the living and active word that we might know your son and the the gift of life that he's given to us Thank you, Father, for for giving us your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we come with expectant ears to hear your word that you would speak to each and every one of us individually, that we might know the things that, that you would have for each of us, that we might hear these words, anoint these words, and that these words would be life changing and life altering, and we could know you and love you just as you love us. So, Father, help me to express these things that you've given me to my brothers and sisters here, that they might hear these words and know you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so just like David said, if uh, I want you guys to have your Bibles because we're going to be reading through the Word of God, and we're going to be reading through the Bible, and so I wanna, want you guys to be able to read along with me as we go. But today, what God gave me to talk to you about is the foundation, about putting your life on the foundation of the Word of God, that the Word of God is essential to growing in Him. And so how many of you know how important it is to read your Bible? I know AJ is, is preaching that to you. He's telling you that the way we know Jesus is the way we, we, we read the Bible and that's how we know who our God is. We don't know our God apart from the Bible that's in our laps. And so it's so important that we know our Bible. And so how do we know, how, how can we know the truth? Well, it's because we know what the, what's written in this truth and this word is truth, it's life. And so today we're gonna be looking at a portion of scripture in 2 Timothy. It's 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 15 through 26 and we're going to be talking about what it means to stand on the word of God. So I know all of you guys we live in a time of a huge amount of information bombarding you. We live in in a day of technology, a day of knowledge more than any of you guys have have any generation has ever lived in in times past. And so you guys have at the tips of your fingers, now not right now because David took your phones away, but you guys can at any point, you can get your phone out and you can ask any question and get any answer in a matter of seconds, right? But would you, do you guys think that that's a good thing or a bad thing? Do you, do you guys think having this wealth of information that's at your fingertips, do you guys think that's good or is that bad? Anybody have any ideas? So, so? Good. So why would you think that it's good? Back there, what's your name? Ian, why why do you think it's good? Because sometimes books can be deceiving. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot of books have different answers. If you go online, you can find so many different answers. So that's exactly right. But that's exactly why I think that it's actually bad that we have all this wealth of information because you don't know, is the information that you're getting, is it correct? Is it right? How do you know what what truth is? Google is not always telling you truth. Okay, there's so many experts out there that are so-called experts that are trying to tell you what truth is. You know, there's teachers and professors and those types of, of people, you know, is social media and, and the internet. All those things are trying to tell you what their truth is. But their truth isn't always the truth. And so that's the danger. So I would say that this wealth of information that you guys have at your fingertips is actually a bad thing. And the reason why is because the human mind isn't made to learn just by getting an answer at the, at, at, at just at, as soon as you ask that question because there's no effort in it. Whenever you have to put effort into finding an answer, you actually learn it and your mind comprehends it. So what I do, and I've made this a practice in my life, is 
I don't, if I, if I know that there's something in the Bible that I want to hunt down and I know, okay, there's a verse that says something like this. It's so easy just to type into Google and it gives you that answer, right? I know all of us have done that. I don't do that anymore because I don't want to just be, take the lazy way out and I don't want to just get that answer because I'm not remembering it. So I force myself to go through this Bible and I know this Bible and the Holy Spirit leads me and he brings me to where I'm looking at. And, and if, you, if you put and dedicate that time, it takes more time, but you learn where these are. And so that's just one example of we, whenever we have these these Bibles, whenever we have these books that are, and I like a paper Bible, and I know David's an advocate of that, and AJ is too, and a paper Bible is so good because you can go through and you can highlight and you can bubble and you can mark and you know exactly what God is speaking to you in these words. So I would, I would conjecture, I would say that it's actually a bad thing that there's this wealth of information to you because you can't trust, is it really good? So what is the one place that you know that every time you go, you can get truth and you can find truth? Does anybody know? Yeah. Uh, that's good, but there's even somebody better than a doctor that you can get truth from. Anybody know what that would be? Yeah, in the red. God, yes. And how do we know what God is saying to us? You use the Bible. That's right. Good job. What's your name? Julian. Julian. Can we give him a candy bar? So anybody that gives that gets a, good, a right answer, you're going to get a little candy bar. So that's exactly right. If you want to know truth and the only source for truth is the Bible. And that's why we, we live our life on this. We actually dedicate our life to this Bible and what it means to us because this is more than just words on a page. This is actually God speaking to us and he's speaking to his truth. These are, this is living words on this page. It's more than just somebody who was really smart that wrote something down. We actually have God, the creator of all, the savior that loved you so much that he gave his life for you and died for you and gave you everlasting life in him. He actually wrote his words down so you could know him better through this Bible. So that's what I want to show you today is how can we actually know him through his word? Because there you're constantly getting bombarded with decisions and life. So whenever you're going through about life with this wealth of information, you're going through life and you're constantly getting pulled in all these different directions. And how do we know what direction is right? How do we know what direction is true? It's only by the word of God because the direction of the word of God tells us where to go and what, what points us to that. And what is the Bible? Who would you say is the one person that this Bible directs you towards? Can anybody answer that? Yeah. Jesus, that's exactly right. What's your name? Kyla. Uh, Kyla. Good job, Kyla. So this whole Bible, it's not just the New Testament that's written about Jesus. The Old Testament also writes about Jesus as well. The name of Jesus isn't in the Old Testament, but he's all through the pages of the Old Testament, foreshadowing our Savior to come. So when you read this Bible, you get to know about the truth, who is Jesus. Did you know that in John 14, 6, it says, Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Does that sound familiar? Jesus is the only way to the Father, and so we know who Jesus is and his way and his truth and his life through his word. So the question is, how do we know Jesus? And we've answered it, read your Bible. Read your Bible every day, not just on church, not just on Sundays, but read your Bible and meditate on it. Meditate on it day and night, and then you'll have good success. You're gonna know him and know the truth that he's given you. So for those of you who actually have your Bible, turn with me to Proverbs 8, 17. And whoever gets there first, raise your hand because I want you to read Proverbs 8, 17 to the class because these are words of life that we've just said. You got it right there? Here, let's give, um, let's give her a mic. You got a mic? We got an extra mic? Okay, perfect. What's your name? Emma. Okay, thanks, Emma. Do you mind reading Proverbs 8, 17 to us? Okay, he's going to give you a mic. And everybody can keep turning there. Do you guys know Proverbs is in the Old Testament? It's right after the book of Psalms. And if you need to, you can use your index at the very beginning of the page, at the beginning of the Bible, but it's in the Old Testament. It's just before all the prophets. 
Does everybody there, does anybody need more time? Because I want you to see these words. What's important is not just hearing these words, but actually read these words. See it in your Bible and know that these things that are being spoken are truth. All right, you ready? Okay, so read Proverbs 8, 17. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Yes. Isn't that good? And so this is wisdom speaking. And, and, and Jesus has been made unto us wisdom. And so he says, I love those who love me. Jesus has a promise to, it that, to us that those who abide in my word, he loves, he loves us. He loves those who abide in his word. All those who seek me diligently will find me. Now read verse 35. Oh, did you take the mic? Read verse 35 now. This is a promise from Jesus. This is finding Jesus in the Old Testament. Read verse 35 now. For whoever finds me uh, finds life. Forever. And yeah, okay, sorry, go ahead. For whoever finds me find, finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Isn't that good words? For whoever finds me, whoever finds Jesus, whoever finds wisdom in these words finds life. How many of you want life in your life? How many of you want abundant life, life that God can give you? Yes, this is where you find it. Whoever seeks me diligently, whoever loves me, whoever abides in my word, finds that life. Now I'm gonna take you to, this is Jesus talking about this in the Old Testament. Now go to John chapter five. And this is in the New Testament and these are actually Jesus' words recorded. So go to John chapter five. And Jesus is saying these. These are such precious things. Don't you know that Jesus was the word who was in the beginning with God and then he became flesh and dwelt among us. Do you, do, you, do you guys know how did the word of God who was with God in the beginning, how did the word become flesh? Does anybody know? How did that word become flesh? How did this living word become flesh? Well, Jesus was born from who? Yeah, Mary, and she was the Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit, right? So the word of God came into and, and, and endowed Mary, and it was the seed of God that came in, and Mary was, was Jesus' mom, and Jesus was born of the Virgin. And this is now Jesus being made flesh and dwelling among us. So these words that we see in the Old Testament, we became flesh, and he put on flesh, and do you know why he put on flesh? Can anybody answer why did, why did Jesus have to come and be a man? Yeah, in the orange. That's exactly right. Let's give her a candy bar. <laughs> That's exactly right. Jesus had to become a man so that he could die on the cross, so he could take on all of our sins and be risen from the dead for our eternal life with him. Does everybody understand that? If Jesus never became a man, then we wouldn't have eternal redemption. So the, what, what became flesh is the word who was from the beginning, who was with God eternally in the past, and then he put on this flesh so that we could have everlasting life. That's an amazing thing. So now, turn, now have, who has gone to John chapter 5? Does anybody have? Okay, let's see. Let's get uh, the guy in the black right there. Yeah, what's your name? Okay, let, do you mind reading John chapter 5? Read verses 39 through 40. The search, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me, and you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. So this is Jesus now saying, he's talking to these unbelieving Jews, and he's saying, you're going through the Old Testament, you're going through the scriptures, but you haven't, and you think you have eternal life but you don't have eternal life because you haven't found me in the scriptures. Remember Proverbs just said that if you seek me, you will find life. Well, who do we need to seek in the scriptures? We need to seek Jesus. So whenever you read the Old Testament, find Jesus in the scriptures and when you find Jesus in the scriptures, you find life and you find life and more abundantly. And then over here in verse 46, I'll just read it to you. He says, for if you believe Moses, you would believe me for he wrote about me. Those are amazing words. Do you know what, what books of the Bible Moses wrote? Yeah. The first five books. That's exactly right. So whenever you read the first five books of the Bible, 
find Jesus in those first five books of the Bible. Whenever you're doing your daily reading, you can find Jesus. And if you find Jesus in the Old Testament, the Bible tells us that you found life and life more abundantly. So this is now, we read our Bibles and we're looking for Jesus who is the active word who became flesh. But we, if we find him, we find life so we can have life everlasting. There is a day that whenever Jesus Christ comes again, and we are going to see him face to face and we're gonna live with him forever. Isn't that good news? Whenever you have problems in this life now, because we all do, we turn to Jesus and we know that it's our blessed hope that one day we're gonna rule and reign with him forevermore. That's the hope that we have that we will see our Savior face to face. This is what these words tell us. And so when you start reading the Bible, you start getting life and you start finding truth and you start being set free. That's what he says. He says, if you find the truth, if you abide in me, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free, right? Well, there's another thing that happens as we start going through reading the Bible. We start finding that the word of God will sanctify us from evil. It starts separating us from evil so we can start living a holy life just as God is holy. And so as we go through reading our Bible, we know him intimately. He, he gave us his word so we could have fellowship with him. So these are some of the things we're gonna be talking about today, having an intimate fellowship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We can be separated from evil and walk holy as he is holy. We can be walking on a direct path the way he wants us to be. These are all things that we can know him and we can know him through his word and know how we need to live our life. So we're gonna go through four different things as we go through this scripture and we're gonna see that whenever we make the word of God the foundation for our life, we're gonna see that four things happen in our life. And so these are good things because when we find Jesus in the word, we find life. And we put, when, we, when we put him as the foundation of our life, we are going to see these four things. So here, we're gonna be looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 through 16, and we're gonna be digging out these four truths. First off, we're gonna see that God will direct and guide our life through the word of God. That's one thing we're gonna see. The second thing we're gonna see is it's gonna sanctify and purify us so that way we can put away evil and walk a holy life. The third thing is it's gonna start shaping us into what we call an honorable vessel to serve him so we can preach Jesus to other people so that way other people can know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the fourth thing, we're gonna see that the word of God brings us into a deep, intimate fellowship with Jesus. That's what we want. That's, what God, that's why God created you that's why Jesus came to this earth so that we could have an, a relationship with him so that one day we can be face to face with him but we don't even have to wait till that day to have a relationship with him. We can know him right now through his word and we know that he lives inside each and every one of us that have re repented from our sins and turned on and put our faith and trust in him, right? Does everybody believe that? This is how we can know this. So let's just start going through verse by verse and let's just look at these 12 verses and we're gonna see what is God telling us here. So I got this on the screen. This is 2 Timothy 2.15. He says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So there it is. This is what we're doing. We're, by reading the Bible and being diligent and searching the scriptures daily, we are rightly dividing the word of truth and we're finding truth we're finding the word and we're finding the word of truth in the Bible. And so he tells us, be diligent to do this. Be diligent to stand on the word and find Jesus in the word. And so what happens is all of us have these hard times in life. But just like what, what, what David just said earlier, that when the winds blow and the waves of life come crashing against you, when you're stood on the firm foundation of the word, on the rock who is Jesus Christ, you will not be moved. And that's a promise from our Lord and Savior. But we have to be rooted in God's word to do that. So this is the way it works. He starts purifying us and he sets us on the right course of life. So the first one is his word will direct you and guide your life. That's the first thing. We're being right, we're rightly dividing the word of God and he's directing our path and he's showing us the truth and he's directing us, the word of God is directing us to Jesus Christ and that's the mission of the Holy Spirit too because whenever you're born again, the Holy Spirit is living inside of each and every one of us, right? Well, the Holy Spirit's objective is to point us to Jesus. So we know Jesus intimately. That's what he's doing through his word. In Psalm 119, 105, I'm sure many of you have heard this, but he says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
So his word, as we read his Bible and we find Jesus in his word, then it starts directing us towards Jesus and, we, and it's a light unto our path and it lights us up one step at a time. He probably and he will not usually show you the entire path. He's gonna show you one step at a time. This is walking by faith and not by sight, right? One step at a time and it's an act of faith, trusting in him every step you go. Now, God speaks to all of us because we are his children, whenever we believe in Jesus, he speaks to every one of us. And he speaks to every one of us through his word, through the Holy Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we're his children, and he speaks to us and confirms it with his word. So many times in my life, as I'm going through, and I'm living life, and I'm, I'm, and I'm reading my Bible, and I'm dedicated to him, and I'm trusting him to, follow, to guide my path, he will speak to my spirit and tell me a certain direction to start going and then he'll bring me to the Bible and he'll show me where, where it is in the Bible and what I need to do in my life. And he will do that if you humble yourself to him. And so an exam, I got two examples that I think are really fun to share. One was a life-changing thing that actually brought me into ministry. I was working every day and I was, you know, eight to, eight to five o'clock every single day and I was, I was prosperous and God was blessing me and we were, had a good life, but God God was calling me into the ministry, but I didn't quite see how I could actually stop working and start working for him. But one day he took me over to 2 Timothy just before what we're reading right now and he gave me these words and let me read this to you. I was in my quiet time one morning and he gave me these words and it changed my life forever. He said in 2 Timothy 2 and it was verse 4, he says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a, as a soldier. So he gave me that one verse right there and that one verse spoke life into my soul and I quit my job, I trusted in him, he showed me exactly what to do to get into ministry and he's provided for me ever since. Praise God and it was that verse that confirmed it in, my script, in the scripture. Another thing is my fiance Shana is right here on the, front, on the front row. We're recently engaged, I'm getting married in September and he gave me a word and told me that I was gonna marry Shana. And you know what word he gave me? He brought me over to Genesis chapter 2, 18. And he told me that Shana would be my wife. And this is amazing. This is what God does to, uh, to those who seek him. He brought me over to the scripture. He says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And he spoke that word. He says, he says it's not good that you be alone. I've given you Shana so you could be so she could be your helpmate and you would have a helper in life. Isn't that good stuff that God speaks to us and he confirms it in his word and we can trust in that and we can know when the storms of life come, we set, we set our foundation on these words that he's given us and we, we won't be moved. And so these are amazing things that you can look forward to as you're spending your time in the word and, and knowing Jesus Christ. He's gonna lead you and be a lamp unto your feet. So what he tells us here as he tells us to make a maximum effort to govern our lives. That's actually what, if we go back to this verse, he says, be diligent. That word diligent tells us to make a maximum effort. Do everything you possibly can to present yourself approved to God. Now, that's an amazing thing because as we, as we, we, we ourselves can't make ourselves perfect, right? We, nobody in our, in ourselves and nobody is perfect. Only Jesus is perfect, but we can make a maximum effort to surrender ourselves to him and walk in the spirit and then we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's what happens. And so we have a constant effort of, of looking to him and he will direct our path and separate us from evil. So now as the storms of life come, what starts happening is the storms of life come and we're, we're walking through this word that he's given us. And then he tells us that we'll be approved as a worker of God. Now, this word approved means to be proven genuine. In the Greek, it, the, the, the New Testament was written in Greek originally. And so in the original Greek language, that word approved means to be proven genuine. So as we go through the storms of life and we're standing on his word and we know, okay, I know there's hard times coming through, but we press forward one step at a time and we're faithful to him and we know that he's faithful to us. As we go, we step out the other end and we're proven genuine were approved as a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So this approved, there, Carlos isn't here, but jewelers, do you know that jewelers, whenever they're working with precious metals, 
and they want to get pure gold or pure silver, do you know what they do to actually get that, that metal to be purified? They put it in the fire and it melts and all the pollution rises to the top. And then what the silversmith does is he scoops off all that pollution and throws it away. That's what Jesus Christ is doing to each and every one of you as you read the word of God. As you read the word of God, all that pollution that's in your life just starts rising up to the top, it melts away, and God's scooping that stuff up and he's throwing it away. And we're cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And we come out the other end approved as genuine. Do you know whenever Jesus looks at each and every one of you, he looks at you as genuine because you're bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ and you're, you're perfect in his eyes because Jesus is perfect? Isn't that good news? So what we do is we, we, we be diligent, we make a maximum effort to try and walk in him, walk in his ways, and we do this, and he, as we do this, he sanctifies and purifies us. And so that's the next step, is his word will sanctify and purify you from evil. Now, how many of you want to be separated from evil, right? There's, there's evil in this world, right? But whenever we're with Jesus, we don't have to be a part of that evil. Yes, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Well, whenever we read our Bible, it helps us detect sin, and it helps us to detect lies so we can know the truth and we can be directed rightfully. So that's the next thing that we see. So let's go ahead and read this in verses 16 through 19. He says, But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Now this word shun means to like push away Away. So push away these profane things that are going against God. And how do you know that they go against God? Because we read his word and we know that truth, right? And then he gives us two examples. He says, Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. These are two people that tried to bring people away from the truth and they're telling lies. And it says, they've strayed concerning the truth saying that the resurrection has already passed. So they were telling lies saying that there was, that the resurrection had already passed, that we aren't ever gonna see our Lord and Savior, that we're not gonna be resurrected in fact, they were saying that Jesus wasn't resurrected. That's lies, right? So how do we know that that's a lie? How do we know that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Does any, can anybody answer that? Yes. They're reading the Bible. Give her a chocolate. <laughs> that's exactly right. Every answer for truth is in this Bible. And so whenever your teachers or your professors or social media or anybody tells you something like there's more than two genders, whenever you're, the world is telling us that you can be a boy or a girl or whatever you want, or you can be both, or you can like the other, you know, you, you can do that. That's wrong. Those are lies, right? And how do we know they're lies? Because Jesus says in his word that there's only two genders and we're supposed to love a man and a wife. That's it. That's what marriage is. And so we don't let the world lie to you because that's false. Okay, we need to know and stand on the word of God. The same thing about evolution. I mean, my kids came out of the public school system. And so that was constantly being taught that evolution, that we, that we were just all a chance and that we just evolved, right? But we know that's not true. We know that God created us and he created us in his image and he created this whole creation, this whole universe in six literal days. So these are things that we stand on truth. So there's people that are gonna come against us that are gonna say that, that what we believe isn't truth, but we can stand on the word. And so here he says, and they overthrow the faith of some. You don't want to be overthrown. So how do you make sure you're not overthrown? Stand on the word of God. Make the word of God your foundation. Read your Bible. So then he goes on and he says in verse 19, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Notice that wording right there. The solid foundation of God. What is the solid foundation of God? Can anybody tell me what that is? Yeah. The word. And then who is the word of God? Jesus, and Jesus is our chief cornerstone. Good answer, that's exactly right. So when, so he says, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Jesus Christ, he stands. He's our rock that we stand on. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ, notice this, depart from iniquity. Get rid of it, push it out of your life. This sin that's in our life, we can push that out, not by our power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. By his word, it will sanctify us and cleanse us so we can depart from iniquity and we can be a vessel of honor. So that's what we go on to next. And the third thing, he says, his word will cleanse you and shape you into an honorable vessel for his kingdom. 
Listen to these next words here because this is the next step. After you have now submitted your life to Jesus Christ and he's purifying you and cleansing you and you're you're saying, let your will be done in my life. Then he starts shaping you into being an honorable vessel for the kingdom. I don't know about you, but I want to work with Jesus Christ. This is an amazing thing that the creator of the universe actually wants us to work with him in this plan of redemption, that we can actually walk hand in hand with Jesus in his plan, that he can actually give us responsibilities to push forward his mission plan. Isn't that an amazing thing that he's given you and me? And so listen to what he says in the next uh, four verses, in verses 20 through 23. He says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. So notice that there's two types of vessels here. Do you want to be an honorable vessel or a dishonorable vessel? So then he says, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter. So notice that what we have to do. We have to cleanse ourselves, And it's not necessarily us cleansing ourselves. We are making the decision for the word of God to cleanse us. And if we cleanse ourselves from the latter of being dishonorable vessels, then notice what the promise is. It says in blue, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work, every good work. We're sanctified, we're separated, we're separated from sin so that we can be useful for the master. The master is Jesus Christ. And, and so we actually have the opportunity to get in the game of the plan of redemption and be useful to Jesus, just like a vessel of honor. Now, so picture, you know, a vessel is like something you would carry something in. And so if you got your favorite drink and you pour that drink into this vessel and you can now be distributing it to whoever you would want, that's like an honorable thing. That's what they did in the house. But you can be a dishonorable vessel and you can take out some pretty nasty things. I don't want to be a dishonorable vessel. I want to be an honorable vessel for the kingdom, for the king of kings and lord of lords. So how do we do this? How do we notice that there's a choice here? He says, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, there's a choice on what kind of vessel you're going to be. And so I want to be a, a, a vessel of honor. So how do we choose to be a vessel of honor? We read our Bible and we submit our life to him and we focus on Jesus Christ and we find Jesus in the word of God. So notice this, this is what he goes on to keep saying in verse 22. He says, flee also youthful lusts. And notice what he tells us to do instead. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Those are the things he wants us to pursue. And do it, notice this, with those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. This is why it's so important to gather together like we're doing right here. We call on the name of the Lord. We pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. We do it with our friends, with fellow believers. And then he tells us this, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. So see, see what he's telling us. If we want to choose to be an honorable vessel and serve the king, we need to flee youthful lust, put away iniquity, put away these sinful things in our life, doing it through the word of God, and then we pursue, we set our focus on Jesus Christ. That's what we do. So these are those vessels of honor. We pursue Jesus and we pursue his word and make sure we're standing on the rock who is Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Is everybody understanding this concept of being useful for the master? Okay, so now we go on then to verses 24 through 26. So these are the last three verses. He says, and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Now notice how he says this. He just just brought us through understanding what it means to be a servant of the Lord, an honorable vessel. If you're an honorable vessel, that means you're serving him. Jesus Christ has been, the you've made them, him the Lord of your life. Now, the servant of the Lord, don't quarrel with people, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. And notice this, it, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. So when somebody comes and tries to tell you that evolution is right, or that homosexuality is okay, or that any other sin is right, you can say, no, that's wrong, because the Bible tells me that that's wrong, and in humility and being gentle to them, we correct them, 
for those who are in opposition against the word of God. So it's all right as believers, as servants of God, to make sure we stand for truth. That's what it's saying. Don't let people push you around. Now we do this gently and hu- in humility so that we can turn people away from darkness and into the marvelous light. That's what he says in here. If God will perhaps, we're right here, so if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Because did you know that your enemy is not other people? Your enemy is Satan and these demons and these fallen angels that hate you and they want to kill you. Remember John 10.10, it says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that might give you life and have, you, have it more abundantly, right? So these people, the people aren't our enemy, but it's the, it's the doctrine of the enemy that is trying to keep them in their, in their trap. And it says, whenever you know the truth, when you know the Bible, we can be preaching truth to other people and we can escape, those people can actually escape the snare of the devil that's what we can do as servants of the most high is we can help people escape from the snare of the trap of the enemy because that snare of the devil is actually leading them to hell and that's what's so terrible we want to save those people now we can't save them what we can preach the word of God and the word that truth can can make sure that they come out of the snare of the devil if they receive and they accept that that word right so it's our choice it's it's our choice on what kind of vessel we want to be and we present the gospel and we present the truth so now the next thing that this is our final step is once we're doing this and we've submitted to our to him and we we're reading our bibles and we're a servant of the lord as we do this and we make the word of god foundation in our life notice what it starts to do his word will bring you into a deeper and more intimate relationship with jesus Did you know that you can't ever stop being in fellowship with Jesus? The more you know him, the greater he gets. There's not an end to his love. The more we know him, the greater he becomes. It's an amazing thing. Some people say, well, I've read the Bible once, and and I, I, I don't need to read it again. No, read this Bible every single day, because as you read it, you grow in an intimacy and a deeper fellowship with our Savior. This is what Jesus wants. Jesus wants us to know him, and we can only know him and have a fellowship with him through his word. So notice what verse 25 says, so that you may know the truth. As we know the truth, we know Jesus who is the truth. And if we know him, we have a fellowship with him, a fellowship that that no one can ever take away. Right, that's the promise that he has for us. So if we're living and abiding in him or abiding in his words, then that word is in us and we have this deep fellowship with him. And then Jesus promises that, that in the end, one day, we're, like I keep saying, we're gonna be face to face with him, glorified together as one in him. But it doesn't have to start then, it starts right now. We can actually have a fellowship and a deep fellowship with him one-on-one where he's living and abiding in us and we can have that through his word. So this is what Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 31. He says, if you abide in my word, notice those words there, abide in my word. This is what we're talking about. Abide, remain, be steadfast to read the Bible every single day and find Jesus in those scriptures. Then you'll be my disciples. You're gonna be an honorable vessel. You're gonna be a servant for the most high God and you shall know the truth, and the truth is gonna set you free. Amen, that's, praise God, that's what we want. We wanna be set free and have a deep relationship with Jesus Christ. So just to go through these steps again, just to know these truths of what Jesus Christ has promised for us in his word, that we're gonna be directed in life, that if we've set the word of God as our foundation, the word of God will direct us and guide us in our life. It's gonna sanctify us and purify us away from evil so we can then be these honorable vessels for God and tell people about Jesus and then as we do that we're continually developing this relationship where we know him and the truth and the love that he has for us this fellowship did you know that this message of the cross that Jesus Christ was sent to this earth so that he could give his life and he could die for you and that he forgave your sins and that it went, and he was resurrected from the dead and he exalted all those who believe in him to be set in, pl- in the high places with him forever so you could have everlasting life. That concept right there, you can never 
understand for all eternity we're going to be understanding what that means that God loved us so much to do that that God himself became flesh and actually died for you and me that's how much he loves you and that's and as we read his word we realize that we start gaining this deep love that God has for us and I tell you that will stir in your heart like no other when you know that Jesus loves you and how deep his love is for you that nothing can separate that from from you no, no lies of the enemy nothing like that you're going to constantly be able to go through any storm of life if you know that Jesus loves you so this is now what Jesus has told us that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly and that life starts with surrendering your life to Jesus reading the Bible and knowing the truth and the truth can set you free amen isn't that good stuff so that's the message and that's what I wanted you to, to hear now my wife, my future wife, soon to be my wife, she has a deep love for you all, for the, for the brethren. And, and she told me that she had on her heart that you guys all are getting ready to go back into school. And, and there's, this, there's this anxiety that can come with going back to whether it's a new school or something like that. And, and there's this anxiety that can be built up. And these are the storms of life that we're talking about. And so what we want to do, and Shana, do you want to come up here? So we're going to sing this last song. It's called The Refiner. And, and this, this song does exactly what we're talking about. It's purifying us and setting us on the, on, the, on the course of life. And we're setting ourselves on the word of God. And as we set ourselves on the word of God, we know that he loves us and he loves us so deeply and we want you to know that and we want to pray a special blessing over you. So I want to invite every one of you to come down these aisles and, and as we come and, any, and if you want to come over here, we want to pray over each of you individually. As, as Dalton sings this song, I want you guys to come in here and we want to pray a special blessing that as you enter into the school year, you guys will, will feel refreshed. Uh, Shana, do you want to say a little bit something? Okay. Oh, right here. Oh. Okay. My name is Shana, and I'm just, I'm so thankful to be here today and able to join your class. You guys have an amazing class. I mean, your leaders, we need to give them a cheer, a little yes, shout out here. Right. They're so much fun. You yes. guys are so blessed so to much. have them. Yes. And so I'm just thankful to be here today. And as Zach was saying, God just put it on my heart to pray for each and every one of you, just to speak a blessing over you for this new school year. And I just pray that each one of you would just grow you know, closer in your relationship with Christ, that you would know the truth, that you would seek the truth, and that you would be bold. Just go out of here and be bold, that you would speak the truth to others and bring others um, to know the truth. Well, so if you guys can get up on your, on your feet and just start coming down here. We want just a short blessing. We just want to lay hands on you, and we want the power of God to, to intercede through this as we sing this song, and we want, we want God to be working mightily in your life. So come on down and just, just start coming here, and we'll, we'll pray. If the altar's where you meet us, take me there. Take me there if what you need is just an offering. It's right here, my life is here. I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're the fire, the refiner. I want to be consumed. I want to be tried by fire. Purify, you take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. And if your glory wants to come in, let it fall. We want it all if your fire is consuming. Fill this place, set it ablaze. I'll be a living sacrifice for you. 
You're the fire, the refiner. I wanna be consumed. I wanna be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I wanna be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. Yay. Oh, here's my life, God. Refine me, refine me, Jesus. Clean my hands, purify my heart. I want to burn for you, only for you. Take my life as a sacrifice. I want to burn for you, only for you. Clean my hands, purify my heart. I want to burn for you, only for you. Take my life as a sacrifice. I want to burn for you, only for you. I want to be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Oh, Lord, here's my life and clean my hands purify my heart i want to burn for you only for you take my life as a sacrifice i want to burn for you only for you clean my hands Purify my heart, I want to burn for you, only for you. Take my life as a sacrifice, I want to burn for you, only for you. want to be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purify. Take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. Oh, clean my hands. Purify my heart. I want to burn for you, only for you. Oh, take this life as a sacrifice. I want to burn for you, only for you. Oh, clean my hands, purify my heart. I want to burn for you. Only for you, take my life as a sacrifice. I want to burn for you, only for you. I want to be tried by fire, purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. Oh, I want to be tried by fire, 
purify, take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life, and clean my hands, purify my heart. I want to burn for you, only for you. Take my life as a sacrifice. I want to burn for you, only for you. Clean my hands, purify my heart. I want to burn for you, only for you. I want to be tried by fire. Purify, take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purify, take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purify. Take whatever you desire, Lord, here's my life. Well, guys, um, we'll still be up here afterwards. If you If you didn't get prayer, we'll be up here. Um, and if you maybe didn't want, if you had a prayer request that we didn't get to, please bring those up, and we would be happy to pray with you guys. Um, let's give a hand to Mr. Zach today. He provided a great message. Um, notebooks. notebooks. If you have notes, please bring, bring those up as well, and we will be here to sign them. So um, with that, you guys are... Dismissed. Don't forget, next week is the the turn-in week. AJ will be here. He will be ready to collect your assignments. So if you've been putting it off to the last minute, this is your sign. This is the last minute. It is passing.